The journey to the top cannot be an easy one. Good morning, Africa. My name is Garson Anthony, and today I have somebody who's a motivational speaker and has gone through an ups and down journeys in his life. I'm talking about Katleho Mabusela. How you doing? I'm great, my brother. You? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Now, where are you from? Well, actually, it turns out we're from the same place. The same place, Mavigay. Mavigay. I'm about for that. I'm about for that. <laughs> All right. But the thing is, you, you sort of kind of out of town from Mavigay. Yeah. Yeah, that would be, what was the name of the place? Uh, Hamudimula, which is a little village yeah. in Mavigay. So you drive, give or take 45 minutes out of Mavigay. Yeah. And that's where it is. Tell me, is that the place where they always have, like, parties at the dam? Well, you know, it's close to the dam. It's okay. close to the dam. Because they always parties that I always miss. But anyway, that's, that's not what we're about to talk about. <laughs> different conversation for yeah, a different, different time. different day. Right? Now, tell me about you. Who is Katleko Mabusel? Sure, Katla Mabusela is a brother, uh, he is a son. Um, on a day to day when I wake up, my job is to do two things. One is to learn as much as I can about this life experience mm -hmm. and then share that, impart that. So at the heart of Katla is a teacher, a okay. person who's equally a student in as much as he is a teacher. So uh, my current, if you would call it purpose that I've chosen, my mission in life right now is to help educate Africans, middle okay. class South Africans and Africans about money. Uh, and that's why I've got a book coming out called Easy Money. It comes out in January. Okay. And maybe we can talk about that. But um, that, that is my, I, I get so much energy from that. It feeds me. So all other platforms that I'm on, be it on radio, be I standing and speaking as a motivational right. speaker, they're merely channels through which I get to do what I love most, which is to contribute and teach and learn too. Now let's talk about some of those channels. I'm speaking about you do radio yes, uh, on a week, weekly basis. Weekly uh, basis, yeah. Now tell me, you found yourself in a position like that to do, also do motivational speaking. What, this, what made you do that? I mean... You went to school. I don't know what you did, which we will talk about, but yeah. what made you choose radio? You know what? I didn't choose the medium. I no chose good. what it does. All right. So, I, okay, explain what do you mean by that? Let me take you back. So when I, when I was growing up, I grew up with Michael Jackson. I love Michael Th Jackson. That's both of us. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I feel I, like doing the, the, the Thriller dance right now. Okay, hold on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I remember one of the most poignant moments of my life. Like yeah. I, I go back to this moment where Michael was on stage and this lady was, I think she, he was in Russia or something. Right. She was going out of her mind. She was going crazy. And for me, it wasn't about Michael singing. It wasn't about his dancing. But in that moment, he had done something that had moved somebody to the point where all they could do was cry because they yeah. couldn't express themselves yeah. in any other way. So I was always chasing that. Right. Um, and I just looked for the medium. So I went to Vitt University uh, to study music. Okay. This is after I dropped out of uh, University of Johannesburg. Okay, and we're going to talk about those parts. Yeah, yeah. so I, I left University of Johannesburg, I studied politics, philosophy, and economics, right? Okay, <laughs> politics, music, Ooh, okay. Do you know what All I right, mean? Yeah. <laughs> but what I was chasing was that high. I was looking to be the kind of person who has that level of impact on pe in people's lives. All right, um, okay, I can see how the politics and the music... Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so I, th that's why I started, effect. and I was like, no, I love music, I, I suppose I could sing. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it two of us. I can't sing love music. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the thing. So I thought, okay, that's the vehicle to go through. Got to Vince University, found out there was a campus radio station, got involved in that. Okay. And then I started to realize that, you know, I'm doing the same thing in radio that I would be doing on stage when I'm singing and I'm connecting with people. Right, right. I'm doing something meaningful and I'm profiting from it, right? Right. Uh, and then I got into business as well. But my life story involved me ending up on the streets of Johannesburg for about two years. So it was a year and seven months of my life where I lived outside, well, lived in the streets in between yeah, my but, car. But tell, but tell me, how does it happen? Because you dropped out twice out of school. Yes, sir. Right? And I'm guessing now it was University of Johannesburg, but I'm sure back then it was called um, Rao. Rao University. The last year of yeah. Rao. Yeah, the last yeah. year of Rao. And then Vitz University. But yes, the sir. thing is, you to get into, especially Vitz University, you can't just be anybody. You can't just be like a regular student. You yeah, have to be one of those good guy. students, right? <laughs> am, am I correct? You have to be a good student to be a part of yes. that thing. So you got into there and dropped out twice. Why yeah. is that? Uh, primarily financially. The okay. first time, or, I mean, on, on, on both occasions, I was pretty much funding my own education. Um, and it's because I don't come from a privileged background. And I think okay. that's the African story for yeah. the most part, right? Um, but I also knew that academic education, at some point it clicked that ac academic education was not what I needed at that time. Okay. And I think for the most part, as South Africans, as Africans, we've been taught that academic education is the only valuable Yeah, it's, it's actually an African story, in fact. Do yeah. you know what I mean? So Be Become a doctor, become a teacher, become something. Yeah? And that's what we know, yeah. and I respect that, and I understand that. But what I tell people is that I'm probably the worst, uh, worst qualified person in the world, okay. but I'm the most educated. All right. And education doesn't exist in a lecture room only. Yes, it can, and, you can learn it in life. And uh, that's the, the thing. It's in the streets, you can learn it anywhere. And I had to go out and uh, learn that type of education. That's what I needed at that time in my life. And I think for the most part, a lot of people go to school in the formal setting. Once they leave it, they stop learning. Yeah. You know? I mean, they get the degree, and that's what they want to do. They want to practice a part of that degree yeah. in their jobs. Yeah. But then you ended up in the streets. But how? Like, how did that work? I know it's a financial thing, but how? Midnight. Yeah. It's a Thursday evening. I get a knock. Gotcha! 
Oh, wow. Okay. That, that can't be mom, right? No, that's not mom. That, that can, <laughs> with the tenants, the, the, what do they call landlords? The, the landlord. Yeah? She's knocking on the door, and she knows I'm in there. All right. But she's hoping that her money is also in there as well. Oh, wow. Okay. But the truth is her money was not in there. I was late on my rent, and my situation was just that. Uh, I was one of those people, and you'll see this a lot in Johannesburg, you'll mm -hmm. see it in Africa, you'll see it around the world, who we look successful, we keep up the front, uh -huh. but I actually wasn't making any yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, I get so that. I was I was a pseudo business person. So kind of fake it till you make it type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I wasn't getting to the making part. I was mm. spending so much time faking it that I actually okay. wasn't doing it. Okay, I feel you know. Um, and yeah, my pockets were dry. That's what it comes down to. I, I couldn't afford myself. I couldn't afford the lifestyle I was living, and I got evicted. And I remember I couldn't even afford to put, you know, that Coca Cola, um, two liter. Yeah, yeah, the two liter. Yeah, I couldn't even afford to put petrol in that just to move my car. And I'm petrol back then. How many? How many years was it? Uh, well, I think now it's about seven, give or take years. Yeah. Seven. I mean, petrol was under just over a dollar at the time. Yeah. I mean, you mean if we're using the currency that the whole Africa can understand, yeah. uh, about let's say ten rand. You yes, couldn't afford sir. that. I couldn't afford that. And but if you met me, I spoke like I could. Yeah. I spoke like I was doing something big, but I wasn't doing anything. So I spent a lot of time keeping up the facade. Okay. So anyway, long story cut short is that morning I remember going downstairs with everything I owned literally packed into my little Nissan Sentra at the time. You know? Okay. Um, at least you had a Nissan. I had a Nissan. Yeah. And th that was the thing, right? Okay. That oh, pe so people kind of confused that. I mean, you had at least the car to figure that successful somehow. Yeah, but also yeah. the way you speak, the way you carry yourself. Right, it's right. an image I projected, the right. kind of lifestyle that I lived. It wasn't exorbitant, but it was a successful okay. lifestyle. And I remember rolling that car. It was a cold winter's night. I rolled it down mm -hmm. that hill because the, the, the apartment was on a hill in Rosebank right, right. in Johannesburg. And I rolled it down that hill. And eventually it got to a point where it stopped because it couldn't roll any further. And all I could do was close the windows, cry myself to sleep, and wow. pass out in the car. And that was the and first that, night that, that I spent is, that on the streets. That is a really sad story. Yeah. But now you don't have a century. You got a Z4. <laughs> you parked outside. You're on the radio. You're a motivational speaker. Now tell me, how does that, how does that turn your life around from that point to who you are now? Better quality questions. Okay. So at that time, I was in that place, the why me place. Okay. And being in that situation, I realized that there were other people who were living very different lives. There were other organizations that were more successful, that were actually, you know, building wealth, contributing meaningfully to society and the communities they were in. And how is it that they were profiting and I wasn't? You, weren't, yeah? you know what I mean? How is it that they were living such a, a much better life than I was? And mm. what was wrong with me? Yeah, so yeah. I started to ask the how is it that they do it question, as opposed to, oh, why me? questions okay. somebody so you had to change your, your set mindset yeah ask the right question yeah okay that, that that was the biggest difference in my life when i started asking the right quality questions yeah. i got the right quality answers gotcha. and what it essentially came down to me was the, the thing that i found out was that when you become more right you're able to contribute more and when you contribute more you get more back, back. a lot of the yeah. time as people yeah. we're looking to get and then only contribute and i guess this is why you're passionate to give back to the community. I yeah. mean, you understand where, how they feel and where they come from. Yes. So you can give back because of the contribution that you make. And yeah. I'm guessing the contribution is not only a financial situation, yeah. but through radio, that medium, and also motivational speaking, because some people need somebody to follow and yeah. uh, to, to lead them somewhere. And you have become that person. Uh, well, uh, thank you. Yeah. I'm honored. Uh, you know, my mentor said, I've got a mentor in, in my speaking space. Yeah. You know, you need a coach in every part of your life. Yeah. World-renowned uh, international speaker. Yeah. And one of the things he said when we first started working together was this, Katako, remember, as a speaker, as a person on radio, you are in a position of service. Okay. A lot of the time with these things, it's very easy to get caught up in the ego. The fact that you're interviewing mm -hmm. me, the fact that people across Africa are watching this interview, yeah. I, I can get caught up in that. Yeah. But when I stand on stage, they're not there for me. I'm there for them. For them, the other way you, around. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. There could be an audience of 5,000 mm -hmm. people sitting there. And 4,999 of them might not hear me. Yeah. That one person who I serve, is the person I'm there for. Okay. So that's, that, that's what those platforms exist for me. Sorry, yeah. All right. No, actually, unfortunately, I want to talk about this more because, in fact, I can relate with your story, but yeah. unfortunately, Tom does not allow us to sure, do that. No but can you please let us know, how do we get a hold of you? Just tell us about your webisode while you're at it yeah. and uh, your Facebook, your Twitter, everything. How do we get okay, a hold so of you? Okay, so on Twitter, it's at Katlego Mabusela. That's right. K-A-T-L-E-G-O-M-A-B-U-S-E-L-A. Say that slow. I don't think they'll get it. <laughs> Katlego, yeah? It's K-A-T-L-E-G-O-M-A-B-U-S-E-L-A. B U S E L A. So it's my full name and okay. surname. That's on Twitter. On Facebook, it's KG on Kaya. And you can go to my website. It's my full name.co.za. So it's Katla Uh the, the webisode is called I Am. I Am. Yeah. Okay. And it was my, my opportunity to sit down with people who are popular in, in, in the South African context. Okay. The likes of Boiti, the likes of Busi, for the most part, entertainers. All right. And understand what makes them who they are. That's what I wanted to understand. I was like, yo, all right, all right. you're on you, TV, you. yeah. you're on radio, wow. you're successful, but what, who are you? Beyond all this, all right. beyond, beyond the cars, beyond the events, who are you really? 
Um, but more than that, I'm excited about 2015 because that's when Easy Money, the book, comes out. Okay. Uh, you know, I'll be the first to have it. And in fact, if you have it, please come back on this show yeah. and we can show the world what this is about. I, I can't wait. I can't okay. wait. Uh, that really speaks to what I believe my purpose is now, okay. which is to transform Africa and South Africans' perception of money and how we can become wealthier in our individual spaces and, of course, in those communities. All right. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. It's only a pleasure. From <laughs> Mav Town Boy to Mav Town Boy. Boy, now. <laughs> Well, there you go. It is Katleho Mabusela showing us his road to success and even further. We can learn from it. I know I did. How about you? Good morning, Africa. My name is Garson Anthony, and it's back to the studio.